So today we're going to do about greenfield and brownfield sites. Uh, this is for the IGCC geography spec 6.3, where you need to know about greenfield versus brownfield debate for 6.3a. So I'm going to start with definitions. Greenfield site is quite simply a piece of land like this, and it's a piece of land that has not been used yet for urban development. No housing, no retail, nothing built on it previously. They're often found um, throughout urban areas, but particularly we will find them on the rural urban fringe like this site here. Brownfield sites are the opposite. So they are land that has previously had an urban development on it, as we can see with this kind of abandoned car park. They're often therefore found in urban areas already. And also they can be sites that are derelict and left idle uh, and therefore can sometimes be heavily polluted from whatever was on there before. Here's a, a site of a factory where um, the building has been abandoned and the kind of waste and old building are still left on this brownfield site. So we need to know about the greenfield and brownfield debate because what we did last lesson, we talked about the fact that the rural urban fringe is becoming an area of um, high demand and high pressure. Business parks, science parks, retail parks, industrial housing estates and big warehouses, they all want to use that greenfield sites uh, because of the great access um, and the opportunities available to them. However, um, it would be unsustainable to do this. And there are lots of people that are protesting um, the fact that the, the, the city is getting bigger and they don't want that green space on the edge of town to be completely taken up. And so this debate on what should we use, should we continue to use greenfield sites or should we continue to use and, and change to use more brownfield sites in the future? So I'm going to look at advantages and disadvantages of both, starting with the advantages of the brownfield sites. So we can see here that on the right hand side is an old brownfield site um, on, in a Dockland in Glasgow. And one benefit is that if you put a lot of investment into it, you can actually revive this old area on the right and make it look like this area on the left. So all these old disused urban areas can be used um, they can be kind of regenerated um, and they, the pollution can be taken away and they can be made into something new. Often these obviously are in, in big urban areas and so you're kind of using space that's already there and, and revamping it. Another big area um, of, of, of advantage of a brownfield site is the fact is that if you don't use a, a brownfield site, you're going to use greenfield sites, which means your city is going to get bigger. So you're actually going to reduce urban sprawl if you use brownfield sites and that, that, that land that would usually be uh, used for agricultural recreation is saved. So we can see here by not using greenfield sites and by using brownfield sites instead, we've actually made the limit of the city quite um, significantly smaller. That urban sprawl, that uncontrolled development isn't going to happen. Another great benefit of um, Brownfield sites is the fact is that there's already infrastructure here. So this brownfield site around it, you can see there's already housing and in the distance you can see that there's already an established city. So you don't have to build roads. You don't have to set up new electricity or sanitation, which means it's going to save you costs, but it's also going to save you time. And also because you're already in an urban area, you're close to services and jobs, which would be really attractive to people who wanted to kind of live near to work. It would also reduce the use of cars. So there's an environmental benefit because you, a lot of people could take public transport or they could walk to work. I'm now going to look at disadvantages. So obviously, um, if you're going to have to clear up a site, sometimes there could be sites with lots of pollution in it. As we see on the left here, lots of toxic waste. So they're going to be more expensive because you're either going to have to get rid of all the kind of buildings that were there. And also it's going to be expensive to make sure that land is fit for use again by getting rid of all the pollutants that are potentially unavailable on it, especially in industrial sites where there's lots of heavy metals um, and toxins that flood into the ground. Being in an urban area, we can see here, as we've done in some of our case studies, pollution levels are going to be higher. So therefore, you're going to get a generally a lower quality of life. Here's an example of a city with smog. So even if you are on that brownfield site, there's going to be some negatives in terms of environmental quality. Now I'm going to look at the opposite advantage of greenfield sites. So as with this beautiful shot here, if you get a greenfield site, it's going to have a healthier environment, often, often going to be on the edge of the city. 
therefore it's going to have lower pollution levels, less congestion, um, which is a great environmental benefit, especially if you're building a science park where you're trying to attract in some of the best graduates. You want to give it a nice, pleasant environment for them to work in. It's essentially a blank canvas. That means you don't have to remove anything that was previously there, which means if you are building something like a housing development, you can plan it yourself. It means you can build it much more quickly and efficiently. And as you're not having to clear so much, it's going to be um, a lot cheaper. One real huge benefit is the fact it's cheaper because it's not in the city centre, in the CBD where there's really high demand. And like I said before, you're not having to clean up any pollution or construction. The land's going to be cheaper and your overall construction costs are going to be a lot cheaper if you have a greenfield site. There are obvious disadvantages to greenfield sites, as we can see in this picture here. There has been urban sprawl as they are building a, a, a new site here. Uh, and therefore countryside is lost. Also, habitats and wildlife that might have lived in this countryside, their habitats are going to be destroyed. Um, some of them will be lost, some of them will just be disrupted, and that means the biodiversity uh, of the area will go down. It's a big environmental cost. Farmland's going to be uh, lost because you're putting housing and developments on it, which means some, in some areas they might have to rely on more imports of food, and also, because now people are living on the edge of the city, they're not living into the, in the centre, so they're going to have to use their cars to get into their jobs and maybe services in the CBD. And this even might require new roads and infrastructure to be built to meet those demands. Last thing to really consider is, the we see on, from the left to the right here, is if I build more um, housing and more developments on the edge of the city, um, I'm going to have lots more light and noise pollution. So we can see the real difference between the inner city sky here and the rural sky. So we're going to see that rural sky over there change rapidly as more light and more noise is put out because of the more the, the, the increased development on those rural edges.